blesses us and the cause is first to shine upon us verse 2 that your way be known on earth your salvation among all nations verse 3 let the peoples praise you O God let all the people praise you all let the nations be glad and sing for joy for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations on the earth glory be to god we want you to know our god is the king of kings and our god is the lord of lords he want us to go before him we lift our hands unto him and we give him all the glory in jesus precious name lift your hands unto him and minister to him he is the king of kings he is the holy one of israel he is the god almighty the god who is who was and was to come the one that fills all in all the one that inhabits eternity oh jesus we worship you we call unto you king of glory we call unto you mighty god our hands are lifted unto your God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, King of glory, mighty God. Abba Father, Abba Father. We worship you. We call unto you. We call unto you, Jesus. We call unto you, blessed God. We call unto you, Abba Father. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Wonderful is your name. Powerful is your name. Glorious is your name, O oh God. Mighty is your name, O oh God. Here we are to worship you, to honor you, to praise your holy name, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. Our hands are lifted unto you. Our voices are lifted unto you. We adore you. We honor you. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Jesus, Son of God, we give you glory. You are the Lord God Almighty. Power belongs to you, Jesus. Power belongs to you, Lord. Oh, power belongs to you. Abadala Dabus Tabahanda. Salada Baganda, you alone are God, worthy to be glorified, worthy to be adored, Jesus. This hour belongs to you. No man can take this hour away. Salada Badadis Tabahanda, Hallelujah, Father, we glorify. Father, we adore. Father, we adore. We glorify you, Lord. Your mighty God. Your glorious God. Your powerful God. Gracious God. Oh. Glorious, glorious God, Father, your glory is, Father, your glory is, Allah, the Baladis, Tabahanda, your mighty God, seated on your throne, there is no one like you, Lord. No power like yours, O God. We gather to adore. We gather to adore. Our hands are lifted unto you. Hey, Lamana no Sida Mayande. Run away when him cool. Where when him cool. Where when him cool. 
Kala da baganda salada bagadis. Lamb of God, you are one. Lamb of God, you are one. You are worthy. Kala da badanus kabaladi. Kila siku, kila kila
your baby for girl your baby for girl spin every day every day of your faithfulness every day of your gloriousness oh mama mama na no sia da ba do le kana mama na no sia ba ya ne Well, only one shabu Be the baby for love Shalabaga na mana no si bebe Tua kupe Shima Nasib na zote He mungu Umeti ukuka Kupa Shima Nasipa Zote He mungu Umetu Kupa He Kupa Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands from wherever you may be. In the house, in the place of your work, maybe. And tell the Lord, I thank you for the word that is coming my way this morning. Can you do so in the name of Jesus? Our God is a spirit, is not limited by distance. The power of God is not limited by where you are. The, rest, the revelation of God is not limited by distance. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, can you lift up your hands and worship Him? Magnify the Most High God, the Holy One of Israel. We glorify your name, Jesus. Thank you because of this precious time you have given us to receive your word. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Son of God. You are worthy of glory. We pray together. Blessed Father, thank you because you remain our Father forever. And thank you because we are born of your spirit. We are born of your blood. And we thank you for the plan you have for each and every one of us. We ask you, Lord, in the sharing of your word this morning, 
that your blessing, your power, and your glory is going to reach everyone hearing this voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Can somebody shout a big amen? I say somebody say a big amen from wherever you are. God bless you. The Lord bless you. For, the, for us who are here, you can have your seat. The Lord bless you. Let us go to God's word. In this month of March, I have been teaching on miracles, signs, and wonders. And we are not going to change our sharing. I am going to continue examining the miracles the things that God does because our God is a doer of all these things just to bring you to what I want to share the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 Hebrews chapter 13 the word of God says Jesus Christ, the old King James Version in that scripture. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. It is good to have a spiritual revelation. A spiritual revelation that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as I speak the word of God today, I want somebody to allow God's faith to be built because it is impossible to please God without faith. And today we are examining from God's word all the miracles that are related to giving. And because of time, I'm going to share not many, many minutes from now. So wherever you are, make sure you don't allow anything to bypass you. Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26. And I am going to read from verse 6. Matthew 26 and verse 6. The word of God says, and we go in portions, the Bible says, now when Jesus was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper the Bible says that Jesus was in a place called Bethany and specifically was in the house of a man called Simon the leper now, I want you to see how real it is. This, what is recorded here is a reality that Jesus was in the house of a certain man. And because Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever, is right now in your house is there in the room where you are listening to this word of God. Jesus, who does not change, is there. He was in the house of a man called Simon the leper. Verse 7, And there came unto him a woman having 
an alabaster box of very precious ointment and I poured it on his head as he sat at meat. NIV reads, reads like this. The Bible says, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume. Now, I want you to relate with what you are hearing because my desire is that you see the revelation of God. Jesus was in a house just the way he is in your house today. And Jesus is in your heart even as I speak. The word of God is there. And the Bible says there came a woman, a real woman, just like many women who are listening to the word of God this morning. And the Bible says she had a very expensive jar of perfume. Now, when the Bible says that something is expensive, you are supposed to take it serious. And this is what I want to say. For miracles, signs, and wonders to follow our lives, that is that which we are supposed to do for God to do the rest. And that is why the Bible is very clear. God's people, the word of God is very 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 clear that can two walk together that is Amos chapter 3 verse 3 can two walk together except they be agreed and this is what I desire that you agree with your spirit today that there is nothing expensive when it is being released to God who gave you life. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I'm, I'm reading Matthew 26 verse 7 in the Message Bible. The word of God says, a woman came up to him as he was eating dinner and anointed him with a bottle of very expensive another version says very costly amplified version extremely costly now listen the bible says i'm reading of no i'm not in a hurry a woman came up to him with an alabaster flax of very precious perfume and she poured it on his head as he inclined at the at table somebody listening now hear me there is nothing called expensive or costly when you are releasing it to God for his kingdom this woman did not count the cost of this perfume. But the one who was being anointed or ministered to with this expensive oil was more important than the cost of the perfume. If you want to see God opening divine doors for miracles or provisions somebody has to come to this realm of not counting the cost of what is going towards the kingdom of the living God because the word of God God's people it is clear 
we see in John chapter 3 verse 16, the scripture that is mostly quoted by people, praise the Lord. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16, for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world that he gave his only only begotten son so when we come to the things that concerns giving you are always supposed to do the best at all times because this is the culture of God it is the culture of the kingdom of God and listen giving is a spirit for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And this God, according to John chapter 4 verse 24, God is a spirit. God is a spirit. God is a spirit and he gave his only begotten son. That is to tell you that giving is an anointing giving is a spirit a spirit that does not actually consider the cost of what you are releasing to God without considering using your head to ask yourself how much am I giving and why so listen Things are going to happen in your life. When you come to that level where nothing really is counted as a cost, when you are doing it in the name of Jesus, and when you are doing it for God, and when you are doing it for the kingdom of God, there is no cost at all. So coming back to Matthew 26, Matthew 26 verse 7, and there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head. Glory to God. When we talk of the head of Jesus, you are talking about the power of creation. When you are talking about the head of Jesus, you are talking of authority. You are talking of leadership. So when you come to that point where you believe, in the power of God, in the authority of Christ, in the blessedness of Christ, there is nothing you cannot pour on his leadership. There is nothing you cannot pour on his mind. That is on the vision. There is nothing you cannot release in his agenda because the oil was not poured elsewhere it was poured on his head today may god give you revelation may god give you revelation to see where the head of jesus is then without counting any cost you allow god to use you to touch the kingdom with what you have with your possession, with your money, with your gifts, with your talents, with your education, because that is what he wants. The woman came when Jesus was actually eating and she broke this alabaster box on his head. Very costly oil somebody today 
is going to see the value of God and then you see uselessness of other things because your faith will it change levels the time you have the revelation of the value of God in your life the value of God in your life I'm repeating this scripture until you see what the spirit has for you Matthew 26 verse 7 and there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment. Very precious ointment. It can be that this was only precious thing she had. This can be a lifetime saving. A lifetime saving that this woman had. It can be that this is the only treasure, the only treasure she had in her life. But when she came in the presence of Jesus, glory to God. When she came to the presence of Jesus, everything else lost value. Everything else lost its preciousness because you can't compare the plan of God with what you have. You cannot compare the vision of God with what you have. You cannot exchange the presence of Jesus with anything. And it is my prayer this day that wherever you are today, you are not going to hold back anything. You are going to become that precious box. And you pour your heart to God without reservation. You pour your heart to God without holding anything. And this is the key of stepping into the supernatural realms with God. The scripture says it was very precious and it was poured on his head. Think about you touching the head of touching the head of Jesus. That is the place of dominion. And that is the place of power. That is the place of wisdom. That is the place of knowledge. That is the place of breakthrough. And so today, I want you to believe in the risen Christ and his work. And you come to a point of releasing anything called precious to you. You allow it to come into the hands of Jesus. And something divine, something eternal will begin to follow your life. Something eternal will begin to follow your ministry. Something eternal will begin to follow the work of your hands. This is that day. And listen, Colossians chapter, chapter 2 and verse 10. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 10. The word of God says, and you are complete in him. You are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Through the giving of this woman, she connected herself with the power of God. She connected herself with what Jesus was carrying and representing. This is the day. And I declare in the name of Jesus that this is the day the Lord is going to bless you beyond measure. Praise the Lord. 
And you are complete in him which is the head of all principality and power. The woman came with the very precious ointment and poured it on the head of Christ. Listen. From today, become generous. When you find yourself in the presence of God, whenever you find yourself in the presence of God, pour yourself without limit. Now, before I proceed with this sharing, the word of God gives me a powerful key in connection with this in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. You have heard of the churches of Macedonia or of Macedonia, depending on how you read it. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God, grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. Again, you are supposed to understand that giving is grace. Giving is grace. As I've also said that the great that giving is a spirit, it is also a grace. And the churches of Macedonia were extremely poor, extremely poor, because the scripture says in verse 2, it says, Out that in a great trial of affliction the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty their deep poverty abounded unto the riches because of their liberality because they were generous now somebody can break the yoke of luck the yoke of luck Somebody can experience supernatural breakthrough into riches, into abundance, into divine supplies because of the key of generosity or being liberal. So the scripture says they were in deep poverty. They were in what? They were in deep poverty deep poverty but there was grace they, they were in deep poverty but there was grace that was at work there but my concentration is in let me read then I come to verse 5 because that is where I'm, I'm coming to verse 3 says for to their power I bear record here yeah, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves they were not being forced into this they were willing of themselves so if you want to shift from the levels you are to the levels God is calling you into I want you to listen carefully you can still go beyond your power. You can give beyond your income. That is, you can do anything for the kingdom of God to expand. Specifically addressing World Temple Church of God, fraternity around the country or wherever we may be. Our plan of Finishing the purchase of our church property is not changing. That on 4th, 4th of April, that is coming Sunday, coming Sunday, we are going to make sure that we do as we agreed as a church. The Bible says, for to their power, 
I bear them record. Now, they were so poor. They were in a deep poverty. But they were willing. It is because of something we call grace. May this grace fall on you in the name of Jesus this morning. May the grace of God fall on you this morning. Glory to God. And the scripture says, verse 4, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Verse 5 is what I am comparing with Matthew chapter 26. So read it carefully. I know you are following from wherever you are. The Bible says, and the this they did. Not as we hoped. These they did and not as we hoped. So, the spirit of giving or the grace of giving will enable you to do things that even you have never heard from somebody else. Because God is not limited to few ways. Our God is not bound by few ways few principles. No. The Bible says for, it says and this they did not as we hoped for but first first, never forget that. The Bible says but first they gave their own selves unto the Lord. They surrendered their lives to God. They committed themselves to God. They committed. They committed themselves to God. Now, coming back to Matthew, and don't close Second uh, Corinthians chapter 8, a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment, for you to come to a point of giving your best, you must first of all, 2 Corinthians 8 verse 5, you must be 2 Corinthians, but first they gave their own selves. The reason why people are challenged in the area of giving or serving God with what they have. It is because, first of all, they have never given themselves totally to God. When you are sold out to God, there is nothing you cannot release in his hands. When you are sold out to God, there is nothing that you cannot release to God the church of Macedonia but first give their own selves unto the Lord that is the key that is the master key NIV that is the master key and this they and they did not and they did not do as we expected. But they gave themselves first to the Lord. Anybody who desires to have an common financial breakthrough, you will go and do something that is not expected by people. The day you will come to that level, that is the time you will experience a turn around in everything that concerns your life. That also touches on your spiritual breakthroughs because they first gave themselves unto the Lord. They did not hold back a 
anything. They gave themselves to God. And I believe the woman in Matthew 26 and verse 7, she must have given herself first to Jesus. And that is why nothing mattered anymore. It doesn't matter how expensive, how costly the, uh, the oil was. Jesus was more important than what she had. And Jesus is still important more than the millions you have in your account. Jesus is more important than the projects you have. You can say, I want to see Jesus first. I want to put him number one in my life. You see, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, it remains a master key of divine, divine revolutions. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, the Bible says, but seek you first. When your desire is to expand God's kingdom, when your desire is to connect yourself with the head of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the grace of Jesus, the vision of Jesus, there is no limit as to how far or how high you can go. Anything can happen. And I pray today, that somebody will see the light of God today and you are going to turn your life around by taking something very costly. Maybe your entire saving or something that you are saying, man of God, this thing is very dear to me. It can be your house, it can be a car, it can be anything. But you can release it to God because God is not comparable to the things you can release to him. And so the Bible says in Matthew 26, I want you to follow our chapter here. Matthew 26, verse 8. But when his disciples saw it, disciples, the first people to realize that you are wasting too much on God is disciples. They say you are spending a lot of your time in the work of God. You are wasting a lot of your, a lot of your resources in the kingdom of God. Listen, there is no waste. There is no waste at all when you are doing it because of your Jesus, because of your master. Disciples who are actually murmuring. It was too much for them to bear. They saw a woman carrying something very precious. And it was broken on the head of Jesus. And they were complaining. Listen, I want you to come to a point where you become like crazy. For God and his kingdom. For God and his vision. And you are going to be a sign. And you are going to become a wonder in your generation. I saw Psalm 71 verse 7. Psalm 71 verse 7. The Bible says, I am become as a wonder unto many. I am as a wonder unto many. I am a wonder. I am as a wonder unto many. But thou art my strong refuge. God has become our strong refuge. So there is no way we can be normal. You become, that is, you come to the realm of signs, wonders, and miracles. 
you are so become a wonder to yourself when you, re you release yourself to God. The Bible says in Matthew 26 verse 8, but when his disciples saw it, disciples, they were so careful. They were evaluating. They were actually guessing how much it was costing. How much it was costing. Listen, men and women of God, brothers and sisters, my sons and our daughters in the ministry. Don't be, de don't be discouraged by somebody who is telling you that you are doing so much in the kingdom. You have not done anything. Allow God to use you because you can only give what God has already given you. You are not a source of anything. You are not a source of anything. God is the giver of everything. And the Bible says, and, but when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, say, to what purpose is this West? For what purpose? According to the disciples, and you see, the oil was poured on who? Judas Iscariot. It was poured on the head. The head there connotes of vision, hearing, dominion, power. And they were not happy. Now, what I am seeing here is this. Anybody who is a giver is a terror to the kingdom of darkness. Write that one. It's I'm saying everybody who is a genuine giver in the kingdom of God is a terror. Is a terror in the kingdom of Satan. Because, because for God so loved the world. And you see Jesus was given and because of that death was destroyed. Salvation came to mankind. Salvation came. Powers of the enemy were broken. Good news is this. You are not going to be no more again from today. The spirit of God will carry you to high heights. And that is the will of God for you from today. They had indignation, amplified version. <laughs> Let me see what they said. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, For what purpose is all this waste? You can't be wasting on Jesus. It is impossible. I say you can't be wasting on Jesus. It is not, it, there is nothing like that. You cannot say, I am wasting. I am wasting. I am wasting on Jesus. Nothing like that. Jesus is God. He can't waste you. And he can never waste your resources. Verse 9. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. The question is, between the head of Jesus and the poor people, <laughs> what do you think was worth it? Receiving this precious, costly, expensive perfume. You see, they were saying it must have been sold. And they were very careful to know that it could have helped the poor. Meaning it was extremely expensive. But this woman released a precious treasure to the Son of God. And there is nothing more precious than your own life. You are supposed to put your entire life in the hands of Jesus. You are supposed to give, surrender, commit, 
dedicate everything you are and everything you have to Jesus and you will never regret doing it. May God Jehovah bless you. May God Jehovah bless you in the name of Jesus. And the word of God says in verse 10, when Jesus understood it, <laughs> Jesus knows what is in your heart. Whenever you hear, we are going to purchase something for the kingdom of God. Jesus understands what is in your mind. Jesus understands what is in your heart. And Jesus understood it. He said unto them, Why trouble you, the woman? The disciples were actually troubling. They were attacking. The enemy was using them without knowing to attack the generosity, the commitment of this woman. I pray today that this kind of grace is going to fall on your life and follow you the rest of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And this ointment might have been sought for this much. And give it to the poor. When Jesus understood it. He said unto them. Why trouble you the woman? Why? For she has done or wrought a good work upon me. Good work. It is a work. So giving is a work. You are working a good work for Jesus. You are doing something eternal. You are doing something that will alter the, your destiny forever. The Bible says, let me put it in an IV, you see. <laughs> Glory to God. It says, aware of this, Jesus was aware. Even now as I speak God's word, Jesus is aware of what is going on in your mind or in your heart. Maybe you are saying, Pastor, yes, it is true. We as a church, Word Temple Church of God, we are purchasing this property. You are targeting something that I have. You forget about it. You are supposed to be ashamed of yourself. Because Jesus understands exact what is going on in your heart and in your mind. And aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? They were actually doing what? They were bothering. They were troubling this woman. So when the spirit of giving is at work in you, when the grace of giving is at work in you, there are things you will do and they will trouble. They will bother other people. And if you have never come to that point of giving until you become a bother, you have a long way to go. You have a long way to go. You are supposed to come to a level in your giving where it becomes a bother to people. That you are doing it so much. You are doing it so regularly. You are doing it in a way that God wants it done. That is the way to higher levels of grace. That is the way to higher dimensions of the power of God. Because you are touching the head of the Son of God. Because you are touching the head, the vision, the mind, the will of God with your giving. And so the Bible says in verse 10, For she has wrought. 
for she has done a beautiful thing. For she has done a beautiful thing to me. To me. Now, so giving is beautiful. It touches Jesus. It touches the, the heart of God. And when the heart of God is touched by what you are doing, there is no way you can, be, you can remain the same. There is no way you can be remain the same. And as I speak, I'm aware, the hand of God will come upon your life and remain upon you the rest of your life in the name of Jesus. For the woman has done what? Has done what? Has done a beautiful thing. The woman has accomplished a beautiful thing to me. A beautiful thing. How wonderful it is. And that is why I want to read Psalm 1 to 3. Because this woman anointed the head of Jesus. And what happened in Psalm 1 to 3. It says, behold, it says, how good, how good and the pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. They live together in unity. It is like the precious oil. It is like what? It is like the precious, wonderful holy oil. It is King James Version. Oh, wait, wait. Eh? It is like the precious oil poured on the head. Poured on the head. And this woman was very wise. She brought a expensive, precious costly oil and poured it on the head of this Christ on Jesus. Now, I want you to see the effect of the giving of one person. The Bible says running down on the beard. Running down on Aaron's beard. Down upon the collar of his robes. It is as it is as if the dew of Hammon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing. So when one person gives to God, when one person, put the King James Version, please. For The Lord has uh, stick to one thing. As the deal of Hammon, deal of Hammon, deal of Hammon, and as the deal that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord, there, where there is a man who gives, one person in the family, Maybe the husband, maybe the wife, or all of them, plus the children. God comes and then he commands the blessing. He commands life forevermore. My prayer today is that your eyes are going to open and you see that giving is an opportunity to bring your entire family your entire ministry, the entire nation, your entire family, your business, your career, you bring it under the commanded blessing, commanded life from the mouth of God. And so, this day, may this grace fall upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Matthew 26, Matthew 26, verse 11, 
<laughs> Jesus, let me begin from verse 10. Why trouble you this woman? For she has done or wrought a good work upon me. For you have the poor always with you. But me, you have not always. But me, you have not always. It means there is a time an opportunity will come. An opportunity that will never repeat itself. It may come once, never to come again. And that is why I'm sensing in my spirit there is somebody hearing me who will seize the opportunity of finishing these six million we are paying next week. It's actually, it's actually the other week on fifth. Fifth. So I want you to capture this opportunity with understanding and allow God to use you. Allow the most high God to use you. And the Bible says, for you have the poor always with you. It means there are needs that will always be there. But there is a specific need that can turn your life around. And that is when you see the vision of Jesus. When you see the mind of God. When you understand the purposes of God. Verse 12. I'm coming to finish. I'm concluding our first service teaching. For in that she has poured this ointment on my body. She did it for my burial. That is a very powerful thing. NIV. The scripture says. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for my for burial. For burial. Wow. So it means there was something in that oil. I know it, but I don't want to teach it in this session. There is something that was in that oil that if it did not come on the body of Jesus, Jesus could not have been risen from the dead. I know it, but I cannot mention it here. I know it. That is why it is called precious ointment. It was timely. He had to be the oil was to be poured on his head before his suffering, his burial. Because something was in that oil that was to raise Jesus from the dead. I pray today that you are giving today, from today, will always be connected with the power of resurrection. You are giving will always be connected with the power of resurrection. You give and things begins to resurrect. You give and then miracles begins to follow. You sacrifice something and then your family your, that is ideas begins to come to your life. May the hand of God become strong on you from now and forever. And I also pray that before you die, that is before you leave this world, that which must come upon you will have come upon you like Jesus. Oh my God. Something has to be upon you before you leave this world. And this thing came because a woman Decided to do her best by breaking the alabaster box. The very precious oil that was allowed to come to the head of Jesus. Verse 13 in closing. Verily I say unto you. Now anytime you hear Jesus say verily. It's like it's a vow. A swearing. 
Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel, <laughs> this gospel shall be preached in the whole world. In the <laughs> preached in the whole world. Where are we now physically? I am standing somewhere in his lead. And this gospel is being listened to by somebody from far. He says, Then I send to you wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world. There shall also this, that this woman, this, what is that? That is the spirit of resurrection will always be in the gospel. The anointing will never lack where the gospel is preached. So this woman has to be remembered forever. And I can tell you she has been remembered even today. And there shall this, this, that this woman has done be taught for a memorial of her. It will remain a memorial forever. This woman will forever be remembered. Everywhere the gospel is preached, giving will be there. Everywhere the gospel is preached, the spirit of God will be there as the anointing. And when the gospel is preached, faith for resurrection. I said faith for resurrection will always be there. And that is how we preach the gospel without holding back anything. And now, may the blessing of the word follow you in the name of Jesus Christ. I will again teach at, at 12, 12, 12, 15, quarter past that is quarter past noon. I will teach in the second service. I request those who are at home, those who are here, kindly stand on your feet in the name of Jesus Christ. As we prepare to give, can you lift up your hands there in your house? There, wherever you are, and tell the Lord, I will never hold back anything that is going to the head of Jesus, to the church of the Lord Jesus, to the kingdom of my Lord. I will never hold back anything that is going to the kingdom, the kingdom of my God. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon my life upon this commission upon this church let what I carry flow to others who are receiving this word from wherever they may be we thank you father we glorify you we honor you in Jesus name we pray amen and those who are watching and you are not born again say this prayer after me and everybody present here say father i have heard the word of of faith and i have realized that i'm a sinner and i have no power to save me but i believe that christ you died for me on the cross you shed your blood for my forgiveness. I also believe you rose again from the dead. And I confess with my mouth the belief of my heart that you, Jesus, you are the Christ. You are the Son of God. And you are the Lord. And by faith, I receive you into my heart. Amen and amen. You are born again. Those who have prayed that prayer, Jesus is Lord. You can have 
your seat. We are giving our offerings. We are paying our tithes just as we do here. When we are gathered, we, give, we pay, we give or pay our tithes. Information is there on your screen. Information is there on your screen. You are tithe your offering. You can go to M-Pesa, your M-Pesa account. Then till number, church till number is 8416. 8416. 90. 8416. 90. That information is appearing there. And maybe you need the information for giving towards our purchase of the property we are finishing paying on Sunday this coming Sunday on 4th so make sure everybody is ready and the information is there also you go to your MPS account information is appearing there understand so so you go to your MPS and then pay bill number 247 247 write it down then the account number is 0840277509141. That is the information. And if you need prayer, our also numbers are there, our contacts are there. You can call and allow God to use you. Blessed Father, we give you the glory for giving us the opportunity to serve you. In Jesus' name, as we continue giving, we are going to be worshiping the Lord with a song. And God bless you. Back again, I'll be teaching exact 15 minutes past noon. 15 minutes past noon, the second service. God bless you.